Okay, so objective one is to identify the critical steps and the guiding questions that um, are important to consider when we are making major decisions in our lives. These things that um, should take some thought and effort to come to a decision about. And so we'll go through each of the steps and go through each of the questions and then I will we'll talk about the exercise that you'll do for this objective and my perspective and how my decision um, you know, followed or didn't follow these, these guiding steps. So the first thing to do is to identify that there's a decision that needs to be made at all, right? So when you, when there's that system error, there's, you know, you, there's a red flag, there's a yellow flag, there's something, there's some sort of discord. That's when you know that there's, you know, there's something within the system that needs to change. Okay. So you know that a decision needs to be made. You know that there is something that's not quite right. And so um, we need to do something different. Once you've identified that, that, that you need to do something different, the next step is to gather critical pieces of information from a variety of informed sources. So if you're only relying on your own perspective and your own information and not considering the whole picture, you're going to, you're going to very likely miss something. And so this takes some thought and some effort to make sure that you are gathering relevant information, the things that are going to, those key crucial pieces of information that are going to help you along your decision-making process. Um, the next thing to do is to decide very specifically on the goals that you want to reach and you know, paint that picture of your vision. So we, we've talked, we talked about, um, when it comes to, when it came to committed action and value. So you're really, kind of, you know, defining what it is for you. Like, where do you want to be? What is the end goal? Where are we going? Um, and then um, as you're thinking about where you're going and all the information that you're gathering, um, then you also need to be considering what are the what criteria are you going to use to evaluate the evaluate the options as they're coming? Is it going to be about um, you know the amount of resources that are needed in terms of time, energy, money? Um, is it going to be about how long it's going to take um, to reach your goal? Right. So whatever whatever those aspects are that are uh, related to the decision that are most critical, most important to you. Those are the things that you need to be thinking about. Um, so when, when it comes to looking at the options, so you know the three, four, five options that you end up coming up with and generating related to, a, uh, related to a decision that needs to be made, what are those critical as aspects that you're going to be weighing against each other to dis determine which one is the best option? And so then once you have generated a few viable options that would get you from point A to point B, so multiple means to reach that same end, um, then you will use your decision criteria to weigh those options and pick the, pick the very best, you know, one or two options. Um, and then, you know, implement the option you chose. And then as you have, you know, as you go through and have, are implementing that decision and going through the steps that you've decided on or the group has decided on, um, you know, the, the final key there is to evaluate your implementation and revise your plan as needed. Okay. So this, none of this, I think, will come as a surprise. Like this, you know, this isn't, isn't necessarily groundbreaking information. This is common um, it, you know, when you look at the steps, it seems like common sense. Of course, of course we would do those things. Of course we would gather all the relevant information. Of course we would, um, write goals and have a vision and look at multiple options and decide about amongst the best ones. So 
cognitively, like, yes, we, we understand this process, but there is a gigantic gap between understanding and action. Knowledge and behavior are not synonymous. And so while you, you know, just like I would, you know, look at the list and go like, mm -hmm, yep, of course, that makes sense. Like, yes, it's a no brainer. I probably could have wrote that list without reading, without reading it. But the problem lies in whether or not this is actually being implemented consistently within your life. Again, it's one thing to know it. It's another, it's a totally different thing to then actually do it. The critical questions to ask, and these are questions to ask at every point along that process. The critical questions to ask are, what information didn't I fully consider yet? Um, so going through that process in your professional journal, actually writing out and thinking through, taking the time to kind of take a step back and think about what you might be missing um, slowing down can be really critical. Um, thinking about the dangerous judgment errors that you that you haven't considered yet, and those are the things that we're going to be talking th talking about throughout this uh, this first book, is the judgment errors and cognitive biases. Um, the third question is to think about what a trusted or an objective advisor would suggest. And even going so far as talking to a trusted or objective advisor about the decision um, and getting their input as well. Um, the fourth question is to address ways when it, in which it could fail. So, you know, I'll talk about this more in regard to my own personal story, but, you know, I have a, um, a good and bad habit of thinking, you know, looking at things through rose colored glasses and ever being the optimist um, and not always fully considering um, the ways in which things could fail. Um, so I can plan for the, you know, plan for that worst case scenario. That's, you know, that's something within my own decision making that I struggle with. Um, but it's critical. It's really important. I could have prevented a lot of a lot of poor outcomes had I simply thought about and considered the ways in which, could, in which my decisions could fail and the steps that I needed to take to prevent that. And then finally, um, really thinking about what new information would cause you to revisit your decision. Um, so that revision criteria and, you know, having that philosophical doubt, like, okay, yes, this is the decision that I made and this is, the, and I was basing it on this information, but if this extra piece of, or if this happens or this other piece of information comes in, I will need to revise my, re revisit or revise my decision. So thinking through those things, actually taking the time to plan, sit down and think about them is really critical to preventing disastrous decision making. So the exercise for this objective is to think about your major life decision and what components of the process that you followed and what components of the process that you didn't follow or that you just skipped. So for me, you know, I, in 2016, I had been in the field and been working and growing my career for 12 years. Um, but at, by 2016, I was so burnt out and I, you know, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't even, at that point in time, I don't even, I couldn't even articulate what the problem was. I was so stressed out. I was so maxed out. It was, you know, it was just kind of like just throwing things at the wall and trying to figure out the best solution, just grasping at straws. But there was really no solution that I could see. It was just, you know, I couldn't take a step back. I couldn't see the forest for the trees. I was so down in it um, that all that I could do, all the energy that I could muster was to just to push through the pain. I'm just gonna keep trudging forward. I'm gonna keep pushing through the pain. 
and I'm going to keep going. Um, and, you know, I, I would attempt to like solve problems, but not in a really, not in an effective or thoughtful way. Just again, just like throwing spaghetti at the wall, seeing, trying to figure out what would work. Um, but the, but I, but nothing was effective. My major pain point was that I felt so ineffective at producing change. My brain, I was perceiving all of these problems, like this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, right? So my brain is on high alert, like problem solving mode. Um, and, you know, just trying to throw out solutions, trying to fix problems, but more in just like a, a hyper, um, like a, a hyper aroused state as opposed, as opposed to like a thoughtful, methodical um, approach. Um, so I was, you know, in this, in this uh, great, you know, state of pain, there was lots of problems that, that were, you know, big red flags, big things that I had to deal with. And it was, you know, I was so overwhelmed and so disorganized that anything that I tried was super ineffective. And that, you know, that feedback loop was punishing of my own behavior, right? So now it's like, I didn't even want, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have the support that I felt that I needed. And so the only, the only response that I could kind of muster was that I just need to get out. If I can't fix this, there's so many problems and I can't fix them and nobody else is coming to fix them and nobody else is jumping on board to help me fix them. So I just got to go. I got to get out of here. I got to run, right? So there's that fight, flight, flee or <laughs> fight, flight, freeze mode. And I was definitely in flight. Like I'm, I'm out. So when the option came to move and, you know, my parents um, were, you know, they had their oyster farm, they were struggling to keep things going. They were, you know, at that point in their lives where they, you know, they really wanted to retire. So they either needed to sell the business or they needed to kind of push it into hyperdrive, but they couldn't, you know, they couldn't do it because of their, you know, their aging and having a hard time keeping up. And so, you know, my husband and I, we, thought, okay, well, this might just be that perfect opportunity. Take a sabbatical, kind of shut this down, re rethink, reconsider professionally what we want to do, um, but then take this step into this new uh, business opportunity, something that would help my parents and could be, potentially be a really good business and could, you know, help with our, help with the economic development um, and there's, you know, there are some positive environmental benefits of, um, of growing oysters and um, associate uh, related products like uh, sea kelp and things like that. And so we were like, okay, yeah, this is in, in alignment with something with what we want to do. And this, you know, what we're, what we've got going on in our lives right now is super stressful and things are like, there's no solution in sight. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in flight mode. So I just want to get out. I can't, you know, I can't figure out the um, solution. And so option to move came up. It looked good. It sounded good. It felt right. My gut said, go grass is greener. One, two, three, go. We jumped from step one to step seven. Didn't take any, <laughs> didn't even pass go. Didn't even probably touch any of those other steps. And with no questions asked, Really, I mean, it took you know took a while to um, you know make the plan to move, but for all intents and purposes, it was just kind of blind faith, blind faith that everything's going to be okay. This is the right decision. My you know my husband and I are the only ones who have the means and the ability to move to Alaska to you know take help take care of my family, and um, we're the only ones interested in taking over the over the oyster farm. So we just we're just going to go. And as we later will find out, <laughs> and as I've alluded to, things didn't really work out the way that I had attended. And knowing what I know now, looking back at, you know, how things went down, 
I can see, I can see things clearly now, right? Hindsight is always 2020. Having the skills that I have now and the understanding that I do now, I likely would have made different decisions, asked different questions, taken different steps. And it still might have ended up that we moved to Alaska, but uh, the situation could have been different had we taken some extra steps and done some different things and not just taken on, on blind faith and not just jumped from step one to step seven, right? We really, we missed um, five critical steps in there. 